All right, so Mark Ferrari, thank you very much for taking the time to join the KISS FAQ podcast today to talk a little bit about your music and career. Well, thank you. Thanks for having me. Yeah, first of all, thank you very much for your support of my Aerosmith book. That blew my mind that you, you'd be so interested in it. And that's going to be my first question about the soul show that Keel did opening up for Aerosmith at Sullivan Stadium at the end of the Dunwood Mirror Store. It's just one show that you guys got to play with them. I'd just uh, like to know your impressions about how that experience was on the bill. Oh, for me, it's such an amazing um, experience. Don't forget, you know, the big three for me, Kiss, Led Zeppelin, Aerosmith, those those were the three bands. Well, I guess you can throw ACDC in there too, maybe a little Thin Lizzy and UFO. But those were the bands that really, really, you know, impacted the, the, my choice in life as to what I did for life and, and uh, you know, my musical DNA. So to, to play a show with my heroes was just, you know, unbelievable. Yeah, that was in front uh, of 30,000 people that yeah, day. Yeah, it was a great show. I, uh, I think Inve Momsen was also on the bill, too. And uh, that was maybe our first, either our first or second stadium show, because that year we also did the uh, Texas Jam with Van Halen. So right. In the same year, you know, I, I get to share the stage with you know two of my idols. Yeah, David Lee Roth and well, Steven no, no, Tyler. Well, actually, no. In '86, it would have been uh, Hager. Oh God! Yeah, yeah there, there's my yeah. timeline off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was uh, Texas Jam. But uh, huge fan of Aerosmith. Uh, you know, it's, uh, I've, I've gotten to be friends with those guys since then, and. Um, and Brad, actually, my Brad Whitford might come out to our show tonight. Uh, he lives here sometime. Right. Lives here in Nashville. Uh, but yeah, I remember that show. We were a little. It was very hot and humid that day. I remember we were just trying to get through the the set without uh, falling over. Right. <laughs> so. So let's talk about some of your musical history. Um, I, I want to focus uh, on some areas surrounding your work with members of KISS because you've interacted with Gene, Peter Chris, Ace Frehley, and Tommy Thayer, the current guitarist. You've got history going back with each one of these members. I, I have a lot of, you know, a lot of shared DNA with, with the band. Obviously, you know that Gene Simmons produced two, two of the Keel albums, The Right to Rock and uh, the next one, The Final Frontier. I, I wrote a song on Ace Frehley's album, Trouble Walking, yep. a song called Five Card Stud. Yeah, I did demos with Peter Chris. They're floating around there somewhere. I don't even know if I have them, but I know we demoed two or three songs. And uh, Tommy is my, one of my dearest friends. My longest, uh, One of my longest uh, friendships in life is with Tommy. I met Tommy the, uh, the week I moved to Los Angeles in 1984. Black and Blue and Keel tour together. Tommy and I become roommates together in the late 80s. Uh, we've written songs that other artists have covered. And, uh, you know, our lives have been so parallel all these years. He's a dear friend. Yeah, you and Tommy have a lot of songs that you've co-written right. on your friend's album. Um, yeah, the album that came before that, Bad Medicine. That's that's right. And also, let's not forget, Tommy co-wrote uh, Four on the Floor with me, the lead-off track on the Cold Sweat album. Right. Uh, but going back to each one of these members, I'd just like you to sum up your observations of working with each one of them. Gene Simmons, obviously, you worked with in the relationship with he was a producer for Keel for those two albums. What are your observations on Gene in that role for you? Well, I get asked that quite a lot. I'll, I'll say it again and again. He was he was hugely instrumental in helping our band shape our sound. Okay, so he, he was very helpful in arrange song arrangement ideas, getting good performances out of us, you know, kind of keeping the peace in the studio. And obviously he was very helpful, you know, from the media point of view too. He was always mentioning Keel in interviews and uh, I know Ron and, Ron and he did a lot of uh, press together too. But he, w he was very active in the studio. Um, he, he wasn't one of those guys that would just, you know, you know s sit down and, uh, you know, get on the phone and, you know, call me when it's done kind of thing. Right. He, he was very active. Right. How did you feel about him bringing songs in for Keel? Well, on the, on the Right to Rock album, let's not forget that we we started that album six weeks after we finished the Lay Down the Law. So we, start, we, we recorded the Lay Down the Law album in June of 84. Right. Two months later, six weeks later actually, we were back in the studio. So at that point in time, we had only three new songs written for that album. Uh, in our case, it was uh, The Right to Rock, Back to the City, and there was one other one on there. I'm, I'm drawing a blank now. We have three new songs. We re-recorded three songs from The Lay Down the Law, 
uh, Speed Demon, Tonight You're Mine, and the Rolling Stones cover. And that left a, a void, you right. know. So Gene, uh, you know, Gene being Gene, well, I've got some, some tracks for you guys, so we right. wound up re recording three of his. Okay, so it, yeah. it, it wasn't a negative side of it, it was a necessity side of it. That, yeah. That's the only thing I'm, I'm trying yeah. to get clarity on for myself yeah, there. Yeah, and we played... Uh, I think the only song we never played live in Kiel, one of the only ones was that song called Get Down, which is one of Gene's songs, but we played the other two, Easier Said Than Done and uh, So Many Girls, So Little Time, right? or So Little Time, So Many Girls. We, we played those live, we enjoyed them. Now what about Peter Chris? because he had a challenging time uh, at that point in the 1980s, and yeah. I believe you were working with him. Yeah. How was that relationship established? And, uh, you know, well, obviously the, you don't have those demos now, and yeah. they may or may not be floating around. What sort of material? Well, it? well, Peter came. I, I threw a uh, big birthday party for myself when I turned 25. Uh, this place called Barney's Beanery. I think it's still there in LA. And I invited everybody, and, and Peter came down, and, and uh, uh, he also had guessed it on the Black and Blue album too. Right. Yeah. So you know, we were all kind of just you know, it was all these you know, co-centric circles, overlapping relationships. And uh, yeah, he asked me if I wanted to do some writing with him. And uh, I remember going to his house. He was living in Palos Verdes a couple times. And uh, it was very collaborative. You know, I think he had, he had some ideas that he was starting to flesh out. And, you know, songwriting is kind of like having a catch with somebody. You know, you throw the ball to yeah. them, they throw the ball back to you. You throw the ball to them. And that's sometimes how songwriting is. So I remember it being a very collaborative process with him. Now what about the Ace song? Because you wrote that yourself, yeah. and just because of business, yeah. Ace has a credit on yeah. it. Um, tell me about the writing of that song, and how it ended up getting placed on Ace. Well, okay, so that that, that was due to my my good friend Eddie Troy, who at the time was, uh, I, I think, a vice president at Megaforce. And, right. and, uh, and Ace was signed to Megaforce. And uh, he asked me, he asked me if I wanted to do some writing with Ace. You know, I said, sure. Uh, but I had this idea, you know, Ace being, you know, a card guy, right. that he, he would probably gravitate towards something that was card related. And so I came up with, you know, I wrote Five Card Stud on my own. The original demo actually was sung by Oni Logan. Right. So, um, and uh, that I presented to Ace. He loved it. He cut it with his band. I think he actually played it live for a while too. Yeah, he did. Yeah. So you know, a really, a, you didn't end up doing any work on that album because he seemed to have everyone in LA, you know, from that scene kind of doing backing vocals on yeah, Trouble no, Walking. Yeah, I, I, didn't, I didn't perform on the album. No. Yeah. <laughs> um, when you look back to your career, what are kind of the artists that really motivated you? to keep persevering within the industry. What keeps you going? Well, first of all, it's all about passion. Music has always been my passion. You know, I distinctly remember picking up the guitar the first time when I was just nine years old or about to turn nine and asking my parents to buy me a guitar for my birthday, which they did, you know? So for me, music has been the only thing that's, you know, been consistent in my life. Right. Yeah, yeah I played sports when I was younger. I was okay okay at baseball and okay at basketball but I didn't I didn't grow past five foot ten so I, I wasn't gonna be a basketball player and I I just got better I got better at guitar you know and I just loved the way music made me feel and especially when I got a little older I started seeing bands kiss first band I saw in 1976 matter of fact I, I look for it in your book here right that, that show at uh, Niagara Falls Convention Center we talked about that and after seeing Kiss that day, I, that was that was it for me. There was no turning back, you know. And tonight we've got Keel Fest two going on. I mean, what does that make you feel? Forty years on. That's right. Keel is a band that never really broke out in the 1980s. Just it happens to a lot of bands. But here we are, 40 years later, and the music's still being celebrated. And there's a lot of people here today who want to talk to you well, about your music. It, it's a true testament to what music means to people, that this music is still relevant to some people 40 years later. Um, again, it, it, it's a blessing, it really is, you know. Um, it's hard to believe, yeah, for me, I met Ron in, um, uh, it'll be 40 years in March that we met. So it's, 
if you live long enough, I guess you get to celebrate these wonderful anniversaries. Right, now coming out of the COVID era where touring has been decimated for artists, you know, how does that make you shift your approach to music now? You you do licensing, don't you? Well, and you yeah, write. I, I, got, I got involved with uh, uh, producing music for film and TV, and I, I started a music library very, very early on in the, in the 90s. And I was very successful with it. I sold that business to, to Universal back in 2007. Um, Peel, we, we got back together again in 2009. That was to celebrate our 25-year anniversary. Right. So we were playing intermittently since then. We, we were not going on the road for long tours like we used to, but you know, weekend stuff and uh, some of the higher profile gigs like the Monsters of Rocks and the um, you know, Rock Lahomas and the outdoor festivals and stuff. So it was, we haven't been touring, uh, you know, in, in, in the uh, in the eighty sense, but just spots, you know, spot. Right. Tours. You do a gig. Yeah. When it makes sense but to do so. You mentioned COVID, so we haven't played together tonight. Will be our first gig since February of two thousand twenty. We were on the Monsters of Rock cruise when, when that cruise docked, like the second week of February two thousand twenty. Everything shut down. Yep. So uh, we're looking forward to it tonight. Well, what are you looking forward to in particular? Is there a song that you are can't wait to play for the audience in particular well, that means a lot to you? Well, I t I'll let you in on a little secret. Tonight we're actually debuting a brand new song. Awesome. So yeah, a song uh, that Ron and I wrote together. Uh, never been played. Uh, nobody's heard it yet. So I'm looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to see it. How the audience reacts to that. And of course, you know, the right to rock is always a fun song. We always have some prizes, you know, when that song comes around. Uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm really looking forward to getting, getting on stage with the guys again tonight. My final question for you takes us back to Kiss. And as a friend of Tommy Thayer, they're on the end of the road tour now, and he's filling out the boots for the final shows of this band and has given 20 years to that band that you became a fan of at the start of your musical career. How do you feel, having been a good friend of Tommy and still to this day, that he is up there and he takes so much stick and he doesn't throw any of it back. He just gets up there and plays well, night after night giving honor to the music. It's a testament to what an amazing guy Tommy is. He's, he's just an amazing guy. And he deserved that gig, and I can't think of anybody else that would have been a better choice for that gig. You know, um, I'm sure Kiss will keep him busy in non-touring things. You know, there's always a book, there's always a TV show, there's always wine, some wine caskets, whatever, some merchandising thing. You know, Tommy was Gene's assistant before he got the the guitar gig, so. I'm not worried for Tommy. I'm sure, I'm sure you know, and he's in tight with Doc McGee. I'm sure. I'm sure there's yep. a future there for him. But uh, Tommy, if you hear this, I love you, and uh, looking looking forward to having a little more FaceTime with you now that you'll be off the road for a bit. All right, uh, Mark Ferrari. Thank you very much for joining me today. Yeah. Uh, where can people find you? MarkFerrari.com. That's, that's simple. Th that's that's simple. You can email me there and. Uh, Everything and everything and anything we talked about today and more is up there on, on the site. Yeah, because there's much more to your career than that little surface that we've been able to scratch in yeah. 15 minutes. Mark, thanks again for your time. Have My a great pleasure. rest of the day. And thank you for uh, for these books. These books are an amazing accomplishment, and uh, I hope your listeners go out and buy them. Appreciate it. All right.